Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the third installment in my Holbein series where I get to talk about my favorite brand of art supplies which is Holbein's. I've already done their colored pencils and their traditional gouache and today we're going to talk about their acrylic gouache. But before that, I wanted to thank Discovery Japan for making these first three videos possible by sending me these art supplies. Discovery Japan is an online mall where you can get novelty stuff from Japan if you live somewhere that maybe makes it hard to get things shipped from Japan. I highly recommend them. Probably one of the fastest shipping I've ever experienced. When I went to order from them, their shipping was faster than when I ordered from my own country, which is crazy. So if you ever wanted to get especially Japanese art supplies, check out Discovery Japan. The link is in my description. So while we're talking about the Holbein acrylic gouache, I'm going to be doing it over my painting over my sketches video. And this time we're going to be painting Sophia Lillis from the movie It. I used my red ballpoint pen for this one because I want to test out the opacity in this paint too. So before we really start talking about Holbein's acrylic gouache, I wanted to first talk about what acrylic gouache is in the first place and it's basically just acrylic paint that is formulated to dry with a matte finish. So it's acrylic paint that will dry, uh, that will have the same look as traditional gouache. A lot of people, including myself, like this look because it's easier to scan or photograph. But even though they look a lot like traditional gouache, acrylic gouache technically has similar working properties to traditional acrylic paints. And so once these are dry, they can't be reactivated, unlike watercolors and gouache. about what I love about the whole bunch acrylic gouache specifically. So the very first thing that I love about it is the full matte finish and I thought that this was a quality across all gouache paints but there's been discussions on the discord server about other acrylic gouache paints not being fully matte and so some of the paints may be a little bit reflective. What I love about these is that they're fully matte across the board and across all of the colors they have which is a look that I just really love personally. Technically, it makes the colors more flat than regular acrylics and oil paints, but I really prefer that look, not just because I film my paintings and matte finishes are easier to film, but also I've come to like the actual look of it in person, and acrylic gouache has that in common with traditional gouache, and that's the main thing that I love about both paints. The second thing that I love about this is that they are highly, highly pigmented. It honestly feels like there's not a lot of anything else to the paints, that there's not a lot of binders. So when I'm mixing my own colors with them, they're very hard to gray out. When we're working with student grade paints, the hardest thing is to mix your own colors with them because when there's not that much pigment in the paints, the colors could get muddy really easily. And especially when you look at this painting, the skin tone in this required a lot of mixing for me. It's always really hard for me to paint lighter skin tones in dark lighting while also still making sure that the colors look vibrant. So if you look at the skin colors on this, these colors would have been really hard for me to mix with other paints. And I was surprised how easy it was with the acrylic gouache. I'm more accustomed to mixing my colors with traditional gouache and I was surprised how easy it was to do with the acrylic gouache as well. Because in general, although it has mostly the same qualities as regular acrylics, I've never really used acrylics that much because I don't like the plasticky feel when I'm painting with them. These don't have that same feeling to them. They just feel exactly like traditional gouache, very creamy and very pigmented. Almost hard for me to figure out the difference between the traditional gouache and this. I'm just going off of the feel. They feel almost identical. And you can tell how differently this feels than regular acrylics because I don't really use a lot of paints when I'm using acrylic gouache. 
I probably use the same amount of paint that I would with traditional gouache, which is hardly any paint at all. And it really just says a lot about how pigmented these paints are. Another thing that I love about these paints is how fully opaque they are. I guess some of you guys already know, but one thing that I really love to do is paint over my pen sketches. I don't know that this shows up in video, but it's actually really hard to get um, to do this with the wrong paint because you really need fully opaque paints to cover up this heavy of a line work. When you're tiling like this when you're painting and you're working mostly in single layers, maybe two, this is something that's very hard to do unless your paints are fully opaque. And so I'm, I was really excited to find out that these paints are as well. I actually already used acrylic wash in the past, but it's been years, I believe. So I was pleasantly surprised about how these ones performed and especially in their opacity. I just, I just love that so much. So the one downside to acrylic gouache, and this isn't specific to the Holbein's, I guess it's also its strength, <laughs> technically. And that is the fact that they can't be reactivated once they're dry. So because they're solid once they're dry, you have to be extremely careful with your brushes and your mixing palette. You have to make sure that these paints don't harden on your brushes. Make sure to wash them before they're dry. The same thing goes for your mixing palette. It'll be really hard to clean those if you wait until they're dry. If I'm taking a step back, this probably isn't a problem for most artists. But because I'm so used to using traditional gouache and watercolors, and also because of how closely these feel to the traditional gouache, me specifically, I'm more likely to ruin my brushes by not cleaning them early enough because when I'm working with watercolors and traditional gouache, I don't really clean up my palette um, every day. Sometimes when I'm working on a painting for multiple days, I wouldn't, I wouldn't clean up my mixing palette in between. And that's also why I don't use up that much paint. But with acrylic gouache, I just have to be very careful with that. But the fact that these paints dry solid is also a great advantage because I guess your paintings are less vulnerable than traditional gouache paintings because with those paintings, if you even get a splash of water on them, that could ruin the paintings, that could reactivate the layers underneath. And so paintings done with acrylic gouache are less vulnerable than that. I have read that they're not fully waterproof, but in application, they feel that way, which again is an advantage that they have over traditional gouache and also watercolor paintings. And another thing about them, because when they're dry, they are set, it's a lot easier to glaze with acrylic gouache than traditional gouache because you can use loose paint over thick paint and it doesn't reactivate those layers. It's a dream to glaze with acrylic gouache and especially these Holbein's because they're so pigmented that you can use them in watercolor consistency. It's just really great paint to glaze with overall. But that is it for my review on the Holbein acrylic gouache. I was so surprised at how much I love these. I really enjoyed this video and really enjoyed painting this one for you guys. If you work with both acrylics and gouache, I really want to know what you think of these hybrid paints. But that is it for this video. Thank you once again to my patrons for supporting me. 
Thank you guys for watching and I will be seeing you guys again soon.